My grandfather was raised in Africa, a shepherd boy who became a pastor. Missionaries came and preached the gospel. He believed and overcame the impossible. He didn't know how to read and write. God wrote the law in his heart, so somehow he believed in Christ. He then walked days to get education. No one forced him, just his dedication. He had a mind like a sponge, is what the missionary said. The missionary's mission was for him to learn what they read. He learned to speak German and was very fluent. He preached about stability in a place so ruined. He was a walking miracle, super spiritual individual who fell in love with an evangelical woman whose feelings were mutual. War broke out, missionaries drove out, grandfather locked in prison. No reason, government seized him, but they couldn't lock up his vision. He came out, blamed no one, picked up where he left off. Built 30 churches under persecution, his children take off. Some were sent to Germany, some the US. My mom was sent to a college and knew little English. African girl taken from an African world alone in Nebraska. She seemed to carry the strength of her dad, the pastor. But she persevered, night full of tears, she was very strong. She graduated, met my pops, then I came along. Welcome to 1986. I was one years old. A lot happened that year. Top Gun was the highest grossing film of the year. In its first weekend, it made over $8 million. We celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day for the first time. Mike Tyson wins his first ever boxing title. He's the youngest heavyweight champion of the time. Magic receives his first league MVP after leading the Lakers to a league best 65 and 17 record. The average cost of a new house in the United States was $89,430. Life was beautiful, especially after 29 years. Growing up as a first generation American was challenging. My parents migrated to a country they knew little about, seeking an education and an opportunity. They raised me with perspective, values, and ideals similar to their country. This upbringing was definitely different than the reality outside of my house. 
It was almost like being raised in two different worlds. Culturally, socially, emotionally, trying to figure out my place, where I belong. Growing up as a kid, I never quite fit in. As for culture, to Americans I wasn't American enough, to Africans I wasn't African enough. I started growing in my creativity by making songs on YouTube as a way to express my cultural identity. I took modern beats and sang lyrics that tied to my cultural upbringing. Throughout the process, I gained over a million views on YouTube from people that were interested in what I thought, what I expressed, and who I was. I began to see that many people were interested in my journey as a young man, as a first-generation American growing up in the U.S. As I started my journey, I realized that maybe I'm not meant to fit in. Maybe I've had this experience and I'm different for a reason. If I'm trying to make a difference, I need to understand the significance of my differences, my identity in the process of my journey. And now I'm on my own journey to discover this difference in Ethiopia. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, Nathan. How are you? How is everything? This is Mama Maharat. Remember last week we met? Uh, before that even I was thinking about I don't know why. And I've been praying for you. May God keep you safe and sound. May he shelter you under his wings. Huh? May everything you do be acceptable in the sight of God. God bless you. Take care of you. God bless you, dear. In Ethiopia, one opportunity that I had a chance to experience was working as a Wayala. A Wayala is a taxi cab's driver's assistant that yells out parts of the town the taxi cab is going to and collects a taxi fee. So we rented out a taxi van in Addis to give people free rides throughout the city. All right, all right. This is life of a Wayala. This may be my future. I am loving what I'm doing right now. No, no, no. I'm not sure. i i there you go. Hey, we have one right here. There is she. Let's talk to this guy. He has a backpack on. Looks like he's getting about to get some study on. Salam. Salam? Demine. 
Give out, give out there. Yes, she. And that's today. Uh, seven months now. Uh, yes, well, your name, mate. Your name, mate's name. Yes, no, Matiedu. Huh? No, Matiedu. That's good, that's good. Thank, thank, thank. Bole Nacho. Bole Nacho? Bole Nacho? Bole Nacho? Bole Nacho? Bole Nacho? Bole Nacho? The life of a Wayala is not as easy as it looks. It's fast paced, requires multitasking, and as a result, is hard labor. What is Jibo mean though? Jibo means hyena. I know someone did not just call me a hyena. Now, whether you think this is funny or not, jokes are a big part of the culture, and Ethiopians love to laugh, even if it's at your own expense. Free? Yeah, yeah, free. Free? Yeah. How do you feel? It's a free ride. This is it? Go down. Go down. Is that? Does this window open? No. Okay, we need to work on that. Talk to your boss. And you need to make this, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. We need windows that open in the minibus. Can we work on that? Please. But nothing. Is she? Is Then you have to have this. The window open. Both? Both of them? Dead, but I'm kabad now. Or we need a sunroof right here. Banana? Is it God? We need something in here. We need some type of air air condition. Allah? Huh? I just can't, I can't cut it with my hand. Bonus. <laughs> if you do it, that would be the most impressive thing I've ever seen you Please let us get it on film. go home happy. Nishi, let me ask you this question. What's the most important thing in life? Just being happy. Just being happy. Yeah. With what you have. Just being happy with what you have. Yeah. Do you feel like you've lived a happy life? I think so. I think so. For me, I'm happy doing what I'm doing right now. I love, I love being here. Love being here with you guys. Honestly. You are taxi on I wish. I wish. Maybe one day, I'll own my own taxi. And I'll give free rides every day. So you can look for me. Yet, you'll be like, Nate, yet, no. Nate, guns of yellow, wait, Nate, yet, no. Guns of yellow. When you think of guns of yellow, think Nate. That's what I want to That's what the ladies do already, man. Oh, wow, look at this. This one moment became bigger than a free taxi ride. These bus rides connected all of our paths, all of our stories, and all of us as people. What does happiness mean to you? One of the most impactful moments of this experience has to be hearing the older gentleman mention that the most important thing in life is to be happy with what we have. His view of happiness didn't consist of monetary gain, social status, or an acquisition of things, which is a common perception of ultimate success in the Western world. He seemed fulfilled. 
through his attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. I took these wise words to heart and started to enjoy where I am and the people I have around me. Right now we're about to have some fun. We see a random bus and we are close to Kera. Um, let's just hop on the bus and let's see what they want to do. Hop on the bus? <laughs> you want... That's not your, that's not your? Ishu, <laughs> Growing up, my mom spoke Romanya, my dad Tigrinya, my cousins Amharic, and my babysitter Spanish. But by the time I reached high school, I became fluent in none of these languages. Since I met the show. Huh? From the older to the younger generation, happiness is universal and seen at all levels. Moments like this is what makes this trip worth it, and these are the moments worth stopping for. On another day in Ethiopia, a couple of friends and I were heading up to the Ndoto Mountain to play soccer with kids on Christmas Day. And on the Ndoto Mountain, there are families living within the community that are HIV positive. On the way, we see older women walking down this mountain carrying heavy loads of wood on their backs to the city in order to earn a small wage. So we pulled over to see if I could help carry some of these branches down for them. More than 15,000 women in Addis Ababa make their living collecting fuel wood from the protected eucalyptus grove atop Ndoto Mountain. Every day they travel around 30 kilometers to collect and carry branches, twigs, and leaves. They sell the fuel wood door to door on street corners or in the many open markets in the city. Are you sure about that? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try this out and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing ladies go down the hill here towards the Adulto Mountain carrying this down. So I'm gonna try it out. I've been in the gym, I've done my squats, but I think this is a different level. So we're gonna see how this goes. But I'm for Allah. And Pulat Sus. Ah. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Here you go. Hey, you got it, baby. Hey. What do you think about? What do you feel about this? So great These about American boys Toto. come. They think they can do this lady's job. I love being in Toto. I love yeah. being at this. Sometimes, to be honest, I don't even. I forget that I'm in at this. Right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. You're in Africa. Oh. Nate, you're the man, bro. Jagnano. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you have to do it all the way. All right? That's the goal. Zara, you let Are you serious? Stop, Are you serious? Stop playing. One more. Come on. Keep walking. I'm Keep walking. Hydrated. Keep walking. I'm tired. Hey, what are you doing? Keep walking. Third time. Seven Nacho. Seven Manda. Muse. Muse. Yeah. Denari? Ishi. Achi. Sosana. I didn't know that. 
Mr. You try? Huh? You try? I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. People are like over 70 years old. But so I'm not good. But I'm the command. <laughs> As I was speaking with this lady, she mentioned that she had been carrying branches up and down the mountain from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, this was hard for me to believe. Hardships are evident, especially in places like this. But it was great to see heroes like her survive through struggle with a smile on their face. This inspired me. Huh? <laughs> We finally made it on top of the Indoto Mountain, and this was one of the most beautiful places I've seen. The huge field of green grass, tall trees, and donkeys running around. It was the perfect place for us to get our butts whooped playing soccer with those talented kids. The joy that these kids had on the Indoto Mountain was priceless. And I couldn't help but to think that some of these kids were children of the older women carrying the heavy branches down the mountain. The amount of strength that these women have and the fact that they persevere through this and just in order to support their families truly amazed me. We all struggle in life for stability or success, but not for survival. I mean, our encounters with survival have more to do with our iPhones reaching 2%. God forbid we're at a concert and have to decide what's more important. One last text or one last selfie. What is the greatest challenge that you face daily? In December 2015, I met a guy named Kayla Meekins who is half British and half Ethiopian. We just so happened to be in Addis at the same time. So we both decided to challenge each other to explore our culture in the streets of Addis. He gave me an interesting challenge that I could not refuse. And the challenge revolved around me giving a gursha. In case you don't know what a gursha is, I took the time to explain what I was about to get into. Well, a gursha is one of the most valuable things in the Ethiopian culture. It's when you grab some injera off your plate and feed someone else. Now, usually this is done not with strangers. It's done with close family members or close friends. So this should be interesting. It should be so interesting. And the added catch is you have to rock the Ethiopian t-shirt. So I don't think anybody is going to give you it or take it from you. I think we're going to fail miserably. In? Nah, let's do this. One day much. Then I'll chew. Gosha listed. Benate, Bafikar. Belibe. Benate. Nah, Benate. And tea. Gosha. And Bagusha. Mr. Ale. Berbere Ale. Veggie Ale. Hulum Ale. Aishis. Som? Som no? We have Som too. We have Som. Som special Ale. Benatish. Gosha. I feel like him. And Bicha. And Bicha. And Bicha. Salam, salam. Gosha, I feel like Alish. Gosha. And Gosha. And Gosha. I feel like him. Ish. Minonish! China here! Yes, you wonder me. Wonder me. Good shall list it. So I'm waste I'll in the car and that's it. Quite 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 Wonder much. The nanachu and the minachu. And the fucker. And the hood. And bitcha. Yes she. Ciao, ciao, ciao. And she's gone. And this is called a good shot. It's an act of love. If you reject this, you're rejecting my love. Do you want to reject my love? Gusha? No, I have this. Borch? Borch? Hey, Borch. Borch? Mastika. Mastika. And the bitch, Gusha, listen. Benate. Benate. And he's in the Ziga? He's got Mata. He's not having nothing. Benate. And he's in the car. The Danish? And. 
Goš, goš. Baka, 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 Ingeri. Ješi baka. Denane? Ješi. Turno? But but I'm Turno. Ješi, ješi. Now, after you give someone a gursha, it is tradition to give another gursha because, quite frankly, one is not enough. And I own them. Hola. Hola, hola, hola. It was truly a great experience sharing one of my favorite pieces of the culture to the random people on the streets of Addis. And hopefully I didn't do too bad of a job at it. I've had many jobs in my life, but this was memorable. One of the many jobs that I had in college was working at Starbucks. I really enjoyed working there. Some of the coffee that I was serving was actually from Ethiopia. This was probably the first time that I saw Ethiopia promoted in a positive light. Well, at least through a major company. All my life growing up, I saw nothing but devastation, disease, and disaster in Africa through media outlets. But when I saw that Ethiopia was known for something positive, like coffee, it just caused me to further investigate more of the great things that come out of this country. And on this trip, I had an opportunity to hang out at a coffee shop and have great conversations with locals. All right, welcome everybody to Tomoko Coffee. We are Piazza Addis Ababa. This is the oldest family-owned coffee shop in Addis, established in 1953. We're excited about being here, so let's go ahead inside and check it out. Oh, 
which means I'm paying for coffee today at Tomoka. <laughs> Through this experience, I got a chance to connect with the barista as he gave me access into his world and showed me how coffee is made through this more modern approach. Who would ever thought that coffee would connect us both? His willingness to teach me about this piece of my culture had a profound impact on me. Salam salam. Pullet macchiato mat. We go. Is the last macchiato. Is she? Is the. So let me know how it tastes. Take the first sip. I'm nervous. A little bit. All right. The judgment. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'm a Siganado. Siganado. So Wakiata number one says it's pretty good. We're one for three. Is she? But I'm Turuno. Is she? I'm a Siganado. I'm a Siganado. I'm in over here. So pull that. Now, sauce. Did you try it? You're not just saying that. Yeah. Would it? But now we try it. Is she? I'm a Siganado. I'm a Siganado. I'm a Siganado. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So. It's my first time making coffee. I've never made coffee. This is my first time actually going and doing this. Astamari no. Astamari yet yet no. Astamari? Where's my Astamari? You know. Astamari no. Ow. I'm a second out no one. I was grateful for all the conversations that took place at Tomoka and it became clear to me how truly connected we are within this global community. There are many things that connect us in this world. Music is also one of them. Whether you're dancing in the streets or on the stage, music has no boundaries and it connects us all. Music has also played a huge role in my life. I never really enjoyed Ethiopian traditional music until late in my college years. There was this one place that we went to in Addis Ababa and it's called Yora Vicinha. This restaurant showcases one of the most popular cultural dancing and music performances in Addis. <laughs>
on, Nate. Come on, Nate. No failure. While we're on stage, my good friend Johnny B gives me this notion with his eyes that it was time. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. Yoda Abyssinia is definitely one of my favorite places to hang out. But outside of the restaurants and coffee shops, I love talking with locals on the streets of Addis. One day, I met a kid named Buttercut, and Buttercut is a 10-year-old shoe shiner who came out to Addis Ababa from the southern region of Ethiopia with a hope to make a better life for himself and his family. He works in the streets of Addis every single day while going to school at night and he travels back home once a year during this holiday season called Temka just to spend quality time with family and support them with money that he earned throughout the year. I took the day to hang out with Buttercut just to see what a day in the life of a shoe shiner was all about. Right now we're in Gurji, Addis Ababa, we're shining shoes. Tarak, tarak, tarak. Oh, I feel the gum. Movie, I feel the gum. Good? I'm off the gallo. Now, but not. Simon, what no? Huh? Tony? And then, Minnet, don't I? And then, Nate, Nate, Nate. Nathan, by Marinia. Nathan, Santa Metro. Asra missed? Is she? Turak, 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 Natano. Turak, turak. Baki, baki. Turak, 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 turak. I'm getting no business today. It's hard out here. Turak, turak, turak. Turak, turak, turak. I'm shining shoes for free. Turak, 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 turak. Is she? Simon Mano. Addis and then Mene, then Addis? Yes, yes. Then I, then I examine my skin. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? Kalam? Kalam, feel like Addis? I feel like I'm Mishu. Mishu, inshallah. Yes. I sit down in that room. Bizu no way is Tanish now, Ahun. Tanish now? Lemon. Huh? Sit down in your lemon? Yes, that's Addis. Yes, that's Addis. Throughout my conversations with Buttercut, I gained a new understanding of his worldview and the social responsibility that he carries for his family. I remember asking him later that Sunday afternoon if he wanted to go play soccer with me and a group of friends, and he told me that he couldn't because he had to go home and wash clothes because he had work in the morning. The kid is 10 years old. 10. What is the greatest burden or responsibility that you carry? When I first set out on my journey to Ethiopia, I started this trip disconnected, wanting to discover where a piece of me came from. Though there's a common sense of struggle with identity within the first generation diaspora culture, I began to see the value of this dual culture that I hold. I no longer see myself divided from either world, but instead I notice an opportunity that I have to bridge different countries, cultures, and perspectives in ways that are unique to me as a diaspora. I started this trip with a lot of questions 
and much prayer. And in the process, I met people that shared their own personal stories with me. These stories helped me gain perspective and understanding key principles about happiness, perseverance, and the rich culture all is a true testament of what the power of a conversation does if you're willing to listen, learn, and serve where God has placed you. No matter where we come from and the differences that we may have, we're all connected within our global community. We share a common story, struggle, pain, and challenges that we can overcome through love. And there's a great narrative at play here, and we are all a part of each other's story.